So now we're going to turn it over to Weston Reuter, who is um, the head honcho <laughs> uh, in terms of WordPress work. I don't can't remember your exact title at uh, X Team, but um, X Team is a distributed company, uh, like literally all over the world. And uh, Weston heads up uh, their WordPress operations. There's a lot of really cool stuff with them, and he's going to be talking to us about how to manage larger multi-site instances uh, via a config-driven approach. Um, before he gets going, just want to let you guys know that if you go on meetup.com or if you happen to follow Weston on Twitter, he is um, uh, given a link to his slides. So if you want to look those up, we don't have the biggest, most amazing projector. So there will be some stuff that if you're in the back couple rows will be hard to see on here. Uh, you can go ahead and pull those slides up online. It won't be a problem for you. Um, so without any further ado, Weston's going to take it away. Thank you. <laughs> this is a, a topic that that we've been playing around with for a couple of years now, or I guess three years now at X Team. Um, as we get into larger and larger sites with more and more pieces that have to fit together, configuration becomes more and more important, and for those pieces of configuration to work with each other instead of having to always um, try to keep them from clobbering each other. So this is a config driven WordPress. This is not just about uh, um, large multi-site instances. It's also single site installs would be applicable to that. It's, uh, it's a nice pattern for managing any kind of WordPress install. So if, if you thought that this, this was going to be just for big, super big sites that are multi-site installs, it's going to be more than that. So. This is a little teaser here, declarative over imperative. You'll see what I mean by that. <laughs> in WordPress, you will find three main areas where your site needs to be configured. You have your environment, your wp-config.php file, and then in your theme and your functions.php, and then plugins also have their own configuration, often in an array that gets um, loaded up when the plugin in instantiates. So I'm going to walk through each of these and see, uh, show you how uh, config-driven WordPress may apply to each area. So you've seen this a lot. Uh, every WP config that PHP pretty much looks like this. You got your constants, your little variables, and not too exciting. It's right there. Very imperative. It's just stepping through functionally, defining each of those for you. Um, and if you have, say, a production environment and a development environment and a staging environment, you'll have to often add these conditionals. If you're on the production environment, say your host name is production um, or example.com or something, you do one set of configurations, otherwise you do another set. And you can see you have the um, WD bug is on if you're not on production, whereas it's, it's off. If you're, if you're on production. Um, so what if you want to temporarily override a configuration? Say you're doing some development on your local environment and you want to turn WP debug off. This should say uh, true down there. <laughs> um, if you want to turn WP debug on temporarily, OK? And you don't want to use Ostracize, the cool plugin that Zach made. Um, you have to modify your WP config file. And, and then if you do git status, you got this dirty index. And it's not a nice thing to see uh, because you never want to commit that, but you may accidentally. So that's not good. So instead of storing information in code, with define calls and um, setting goal variables, you can instead store the information in arrays and store it in a declarative way instead of an imperative way. So here's an example of a, a base configuration for a site. You see, instead of having a, a define DB host, you just assign it into an array. And the same goes for the uh, global variable the table prefix. Instead of it being assigned to a global variable, it's assigned to this 
this array, this associative array. And so then, in your WP config, you load up this array, iterate over it. If a key is all uppercase characters, you do a define. If it's all lowercase, you do a set global variable, just like that. So that's one level to these configs, but that's that's kind of nice. Uh, norm it has a um, consistent uh, interface for managing configuration and array. You don't have to decide. Oh, is this a define? Is this a, a variable? You can just assign it to an array. Um, but the key benefit here comes when you have these in, uh, environment-specific configurations. So instead of having this conditional, if your HTTP host is production, do this set of configuration. Instead, you can have a production-specific configuration that gets merged with the default configuration. So here, this, this default.m.php file is the one that you saw before, and then it gets merged with this production-specific configuration in production.m.php. And so then in your config, WP config, you load that environment-specific configuration. And when this uh, returns right here, it will have the production array merged on top of the default array. And then you, if you wanted to have WP debug turned off or on, only in production, whatever is inside of production.m.php will trump whatever in the default.m.php file. And you can go a step further, uh, what I was talking about before, where you have temporary overrides for your, if you're uh, hacking and you want to turn WP debug on temporarily, you can have a, another environment file, like production overrides that end up PHP, which is git ignored or SVN ignored. And so it's not committed to the repo, but you can just supply it there in your uh, config directory and it will get read and merged on top of the default and the production end up PHP. All three will be get merged together at the end. And so this is a common way that we store sensitive production information in your site. Uh, you don't want to commit sensitive passwords to your uh, repository. If you don't trust all the developers who are contributing or it's better to keep the information uh, separate if you can. And so in our uh, Capistrano deploy script, one of the steps at the end is to copy this file. It's not committed to the repo as a final step. Copy this file into the build and then WordPress will automatically read it uh, when WordPress runs. Where the file Whatever Capistrano is told to copy it from. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, but where is that? Well, it could be in a another repository that you specifically manage as DevOps instead of as part of the development uh, repo. Okay. Is that what you do? Yeah. Okay. So you have like another repo. That's... Yeah. So you don't worry so much about the repo being insecure as that other people who knows who's in the developer code repo yeah. could be developers. If you have a contractor coming in temporarily, right. you don't necessarily want to give them the keys to everything. Okay, yeah. Another alternative here, which all this code is also on uh, GitHub, but here's an alter another alternative where you can Here's like what we saw up here, where you have the production uh, defaults, the production uh, configuration. Here, we take that and then merge on top of it these uh, variables that are defined in your environment. So if you have set your server environment to um, declare a variable wp underscore db underscore host, then this will automatically read that and override anything you have to find inside of your your uh, your file here. So in this way, you can store the um, credentials 
separately from any PHP script at all. Uh, so, uh, presentation is a little off there. The um, array merge works pretty well if you have flat lists, but if you have multidimensional risk lists, you, if one array, if you have two two arrays and each of them has two more arrays inside of them, um, if you merge those the parent arrays together, whatever is in the second array will clobber what's in the first, no matter how, even if you just define, like, like if you have a, if you have a big long array, that hash equals um, in this, lot, this big array of configuration, if you do it on a merge with a multidimensional array, even though this, this array only has zero, False. It, this whole array will clobber the, um, the the base larger array. So this this uh, class here I wrote, which extends the array object class, SQL array, array object, and it handles the multi-dimensional um, associative array merging. So if you you can have a big array as your base, and then in your um, environment specific array, you can just have a sparse array. That only defines the information that you want to over that you want to override. So in that way, there's very little, there's no duplication in your in your configurations. So that's that's server configuration. Any questions about that? You had something um, a few slides back, and there was a file you were reading in. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, it was the active, active end. And is that just that's you're just reading like uh, a line from that or Yeah, this is we're using as a a switch to indicate which environment is currently active. So it could be stored in this file. This is not this is get ignored as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not committed to the repo. Or it could be reading from an environment variable as well. Or it could be looking at the HTTP host to, as well or Okay, and then oh, so it'll just it will ultimately return Something like production, production dev, okay. BBB, whatever. And that, that name corresponds to this .m.php file. So whatever you have in here is like production.m.php, BBB.m.php. Yeah. What's the URL for the uh, GitHub repo you mentioned? Um, it's github.com slash xteam slash config hyphen driven hyphen WP. Is it X team with a with I? Yeah. It's linked in those slides. It's yeah. at the last. Oh, like, click yeah. links of the slide. I'll take you there. Okay. Okay, so that's server or WordPress install configuration, whatever you would normally put in your WP config file. So now moving into theme configuration. Um, <coughs> The you've all worked with parent themes and child themes, and you've worked with inheriting things from the parent theme and you know trying to override them in the child theme. <coughs> well, there's a lot of things that may go into your theme in your themes functions.php. You you, you define your content width variable. Um, you do add theme support for you know post formats or um, post thumbnails, post. Yeah, featured images, whatever they're called. Uh, menus, sidebars, image sizes. Um, you can enqueue your scripts and your styles. You can define any customizer um, uh, settings. So if your customizer, if you if your theme supports post message for updating your uh, customizer preview window, you can find that. You'll often find that in your functions.php, and then also your template tags. You'll have those there as well. So uh, your traditional child theme functions at PHP will do uh, defining constants, which happily no longer really is done because it's deprecated in favor of add theme support most often. Um, you're, you're calling your functions at the add theme support at the image size. You're 
Uh, let me. Do it live. You define a function, like a template tag, and then you set global variables, and you add any filters or actions that you want your theme to, to um, include when WordPress runs. So that's pretty standard. There's not a lot of different things. You got a uh, different uh, approaches to defining these configuration, you constants and functions and little variables and filter calls. And so it's not very consistent. It's kind of a mess. And so when you look at your, your typical functions.php, you got all these different uh, functions that are happening at different times. And you have to try to remember the right syntax for what feature you're trying to configure. And so it's, it's hard to easily drill down to exactly where you need to configure because it's all over the place. And a child theme loads before a parent theme loads. So this is done so that your, because a, a child theme used to always define these uh, constants and these global functions, WordPress doesn't allow you to override constants that have been previously defined or override functions that have been previously set or defined as well. So that's why the theme loads first. And so in your parent theme, you have to always make sure that you check is not defined. Um, if you have any add uh, image size or add theme support, you need to make sure that you don't overwrite what a child theme may have already set. You have to check to see if those, that function exists first. If you don't, you'll get a fatal error. <coughs> you have to check to see if the global variables have been set already and only set it if it hasn't. And then you have to make sure that your any filters that you add happen before they would happen in the child theme. So you got to set the priority a little higher. That's <laughs> a mess. That's just not right. This has got to be more elegant. So here is a way, one way to go about that. So here, instead of having all those different functions and, and uh, function calls and uh, all those different syntax different ways of configuring themes in that previous slide. Here you have a single array that defines all the different features and configuration that your theme um, supports and what, it, what WordPress needs to activate when it runs. So you got your content width, your theme support, menus, image sizes, sidebars, <laughs> uh, the style sheets that you want to register and enqueue, Scripts that you want to register in a queue. Customizer, customizations. And then uh, here's a little uh, experimental piece. Template tags, where you can define at runtime what those functions are going to be mapped to, but it requires eval, so I don't re necessarily recommend that right now. But um, uh, so that, 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 that's the parent config. And so then when you have a child uh, theme, you can indicate which, theme, which configurations are in the parent uh, that you want to merge on top of. So here you have, if, if, this, is, if this child theme is, say, uh, KFU uh, radio station, um, and this parent theme is radio, then this will load the, the radio config. And then on top of it, merge this other themes configuration, this mix in narrow minimalist config. And then on top of those merged together will be merged the whole uh, child theme configuration. So there's three different levels. And you can have any number of, any number of um, mix in configurations as you want. So for the Rogers Radio Network in Canada. There's a it's a network, multi-site network of 43 radio stations, and within that multi-site network, they're all using the same parent theme. And so that parent theme has within it um, 
a superset of all the functionality, or most all the functionality that the, the, um, the sites, the child themes need. And then the child themes <coughs> opt in to features that they support. So say you, you have a, a station that, yeah? Sorry. Okay. <laughs> if you have a station that, that has a morning show, well, you don't want that morning show feature to be on all of your sites because it's not applicable to all of them. But you don't want to have to duplicate that morning show feature in each child theme that supports it. So you want to have a mix-in theme that defines just that, that um, morning show functionality. So you have your parent radio station theme, you have your morning show mix-in theme, and then you have your station-specific child theme. So then it merges those together, and you can have any number of features, like um, maybe you have a news section on your radio station, you can take merge in the, the news mix-in theme. So any number of, any number of features, custom, any themes that you want to have added into the mix of the traditional parent-child theme uh, relationship. Now you can have multiple uh, themes that are all being, are all playing together. Do you use the theme support safe to have it reduce those dependencies? Uh, in, for, in our case, we're using the configuration itself, Loading the, looking at what the configuration <coughs> indicates it supports. So. Right, but are you indicating support through theme supports or um, that's 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 the best way to do it. But we also just define a new like option in this. This right here doesn't get converted into global variable. These these don't. This is just in the theme in the theme context. It's just stored in a uh, stored in a one global variable theme config, and then you can access the members of that to indicate. Whether something is supported or not, but but using theme support API, yeah, yeah. So in this particular use case, you have the parent theme with functionality that you need to provide for every single site, and then in the child themes, you have basically what that station is, and then you have the mix-ins, more like modular functions that you then call in if it's appropriate to a given child theme. Yeah. Cool. So the the child theme. Because those arrays are merged together, the child theme down here has the last word on whether something gets activated just by toggling a configuration option down here. So you can see for this child theme, we don't want to have a sidebar. So we, we say sidebar primary false. So when those arrays get merged together, this element gets dropped out. And so then that sidebar is never even activated. Uh, same for here for this script. This radio navigation script here, we just say we don't need this on the site, so we just enqueue it false, and that just says it just <coughs> it remains registered, but it doesn't show up. So all of this stuff is kind of hard coded. So if a website wanted to add that sidebar, and they would need developer intervention rather than the traditional, you know, widgets or whatever that some u WordPress users are used to going in and configuring. Well, if, yeah. So if that site was specifically coded to not include a sidebar, then yeah, you wouldn't be able to add widgets. Yeah, so if they're, you know, whoever owned that, that radio station went, hey, we want a sidebar, and they couldn't go log in on the weekend and do it. They'd have to call you guys. Right, but this is, I mean, this is just an example. Yeah. Normally, you wouldn't be turning off sidebars, but if you needed to, if a, if a, if a if it was like a microsite, for example, like this news station that, that is just being launched and there's no content yet, and you just want to have a splash page. Maybe you don't want to have sidebars or menus, so you just turn them off. But they could switch the theme. So like if you have like a KFU splash theme and a KFU full theme, the splash theme could say, I don't want the primary primary sidebar, but then the full theme could say, yes, I do. And they could just switch the, the theme in the admin. So there's a MU plugin that you can access in that GitHub repo, which reads in that configuration array and then steps through it and interprets it, does the, the add theme support, all those different calls that you saw before, which are traditional in the functions.php for a theme. And so 
this will handle that, all that for you, so you don't have to add it to every functions.php that you have. Um, so something that I hinted to at, in the description, which <laughs> was a little uh, esoteric, I guess, um, cross uh, introspection of other sites. Um, so this is an example of where, for this rating network, we have a feature where you uh, editors want to be able to cross post uh, articles from one blog and network to another. And they want to be able to cross post various post types as well. So if they want to post regular posts, they want to post um, like if, if the, the show has different, if the station has different shows, like morning show, evening show, whatever, they want to be able to cross post those posts as well. Um, so we have a function, we have, some, we have a meta box where you can cross post your, the current post to any number of other posts. And then you can update it once it's already been cross posted. Well, if you are wanting to cross post a, a show post, it only makes sense to be able to cross post that to other sites that actually support shows, right? You don't want to cross post it to a site that doesn't even have shows because it won't do anything. So normally WordPress, because you're, when you load up a site, it registers post types and, and theme support at runtime. You can't look at another site in the network to determine at runtime what support has been added because in, you, in order to know, you have to actually execute the site. You have to actually run the site. You have to run the theme because that's it's declared normally, imperatively, in function, function calls. But if each site has a configuration that is associated with it, then you can, in one site, just load up the configuration to the other site and say, okay, do you have this post type registered? If so, allow, you, allow yourself to cross post to it, that, that show post. So here's an example. Um, let's say you wanted to embed an iframe of another site on the network. Um, on, on, the, on your site. If you want to access the uh, content width variable, little variable, on another site, you can't do it at runtime because, again, it's declared, it's defined at runtime. If, unless you want to, to load up the functions.php and do some regular expression matching to see if you can find the content width equals string, that's not advised. So here you can say, let's say you're on, uh, on one blog and you want to check to see what the content width is for the blog with the ID 3. So you switch the blog, you load up the configuration for that, uh, that site, and then that content width configuration is stored in whatever the configuration for that site returns. So other site config, other site config content width. So here you can, because this is running in the context, of the other site, and because the configuration is declarative and not being run uh, imperatively in code, you are able to obtain that content width uh, configuration that normally well, you would not be able to get access to. And then you restore current blog at the end, and now you have a nice little iframe with the content, with the content width of the other site. This is a contrived example, but you can see where I'm getting, what I'm, what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, would it make sense to store more information about the other sites in the config so yeah. that you didn't have to do a switch to blog just to get just essentially get one piece of information? Store more information in the config? Yeah, so basically all you needed there is the path to that config right. and then the URL for the site. Yeah. Otherwise you wouldn't need to do a That's switch right. to blog. Yeah. Um, so I guess I'm like taking this to the extreme, like store more information about yeah. the sites in their configs than, you know, somewhere in your code you have that number three or whatever, you know what mm -hmm. blog you need to get anyway, so yeah, why exactly. not just uh, access that file directly rather than sure. having to switch to blog, which, you know, there's some overhead with that. Yeah. Um, 
So could yeah, you could you like totally. take this to the nth degree? Yeah, you can. Like we um, we store social media account information in the configuration. We store um, like like if it's a a station that like it's like um, store the location of where the station is serving. So like. Uh, Seattle or Portland or um, if there's like a information for like obtaining weather like a web API caller for getting weather information or all that stuff can be stored in this configuration um, and, but then we also have because these configurations can be merged together we also have an admin page which you can go in and for certain options in the configuration you can define in um, in the WP admin so if you want to overwrite the Twitter handle for a site, you can go in to the admin and define it there. And then on top of the base uh, array, configuration array, and the station specific configuration array, then the options array from the database gets merged on top of that as well. So then you have three different layers and um, you have a lot of control over what happens in the end. And you don't have to define everything in the database because you can um, you can define all the defaults you know in, in the theme itself and then if you want to you can override it conditionally in the, in the WordPress admin. When you say access in the admin do you have to be a super admin to do that or since it's a multi-site or can any admin? Uh, we just defined a new admin page <coughs> and if you are able to edit theme options for that blog you can you so can override it. Yeah, yeah. It could be whatever capability you want. Uh, here's another example. Again, you wouldn't have to do a switch to blog if you don't want to. But um, if you wanted to query all the sites on your network that supported the, the video post format, you could load up all the blog IDs in your network for each one, switch to blog, grab the config, check to see if your configuration array has as this defined, get theme supports post formats video. If so, it just appends that uh, URL to an array, and then you can go in and print out a list of the blogs in your network that support uh, video post format. So, um, I talked about environment configuration, theme configuration. Plugin configuration, I think, is simpler because it's localized within the context of a plugin. But you can, when you instantiate your plugin, if you're writing a plugin in your constructor, just instantiate a new WP config array. And then, uh, if you were normally, um, if you were normally just having a regular array, you can just use this instead. And then you can then merge in via some action hook. Other plugins can then just merge on top of that array the configuration that they want to uh, define for your plugin. So like I said, it's on GitHub. Uh, I just hacked on the prototype over the weekend, so it's not a fully functioning site, but it just illustrates the concept that I'm trying to communicate. And that's all I have for you. Any questions? More questions? Did you, um, like what was going through my head when you were talking about the configuration being sort of a PHP array was like the use of JSON and I don't know why it's a simple thing to go to the configuration array. Have you experimented with any other ways to create the configuration file itself? Yeah, initially I was using JSON. I'll show you. So if it's if your configuration array is PHP code, then it can do things on the fly. You know, you can oh, let me show you. Um, your themes, radio, config. So let's go down here to your scripts. So here, this the config driver 
when it iterates over the scripts array and it turns the different, the script, the source, the enqueue, these into positional parameters. When it comes across the enqueue array item, it checks to see if it's a if it's callable function. If and if it is, then it just runs it right there and then uses the return value of that when it, it gets passed into WP and Q uh, script. And you could also say you have uh, one thing we often do, we'll have like um, for the dev environment in the uh, site level configuration, your like bpp.php, the WP debug array item may not be set to true or false at all, it may be set to is set underscore get um, de you know, debug or something. So you can conditionally set configuration options in the query string so that you can easily toggle them without having to actually go in and modify code. So if by having all that done, if by having all these configuration arrays in PHP, they can do fancy things like that, which you wouldn't be able to if it was just JSON. And uh, PHP sports commenting whereas JSON does not. <laughs> you mentioned a blog in earlier. Is that um, necessary for the game to be able to understand all those config files together? The, this plugin right here. <coughs> so this is the, the config array class. And then this config drivers move plugin is what uh, runs after theme setup, so once your theme is loaded, this runs and it it'll, it'll grab the config for the theme and it will then iterate over it and do all the setup. So you can see your add theme support, um, you do your add image size, register nav menus, but it's it's getting all the content from the configuration array. So you could copy this plugin into your functions.php if you wanted to, I and mean, into your uh, themes functions.php. But this just makes it available to every site in your network. Yeah, Sam? Part of what's nice, I think, to a lot of people with uh, WordPress is that any WordPress site you kind of start working on, you sort of know, okay, I'm going to use a config file, this is going to be here, mm -hmm. this is what a plugin is like, this is like the stuff I can expect from the theme. This is kind of unfamiliar. Like, if I got this, I'd yeah. Going on here, what crazy idea is this I have? I mean, this seems to work really well in your system, but if you thought about that, like, do you have concerns about that? If, I don't know, maybe in the future you guys aren't working on the specific stuff? Job security for its team. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> in, one, in one sense, it's brilliant. Um, in the other, you're making me very angry. <laughs> I don't know, have you thought about that? Well, it, it, in the end, I think most, for example, Rogers, um, because they know if I want to change a configuration option for the theme, all I need to go is just config.php. And even if they're not a coder, they can easily find where that's located and they can easily understand the syntax of an array in PHP. So if they wanted to even submit a pull request themselves, you know, they could do that. Whereas if they were having to actually add a function call to, you know, to the um, functions.php, they could easily cause a syntax error. You know. So that's a valid concern. Um, so this isn't applicable to all sites, but if you have a large multi-site instance where it benefits from it, then why not? And so this is this is a your WP config and it says right here what's going on, so you don't have to guess. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if we have it documented and code pretty well, it's, I mean, it's all there, all the same, you know, all the same variables get set. Yeah. Which is not exactly what you would expect. But this theoretically could still work with, with normal um, uh, imperative sort of declaration, right? Yeah, so, oh yeah. Um, if I was like, oh, I have no clue what this crazy setup's all about, I know how to use add theme support, mm -hmm. I can still go in there and do that, just so long as it's running late enough that it'll override whatever your config is doing. Yeah. So in your 
functions.php, it's really bare, but you can just, after theme setup, add your own um, functions, function calls there. If you don't want to, if you don't want to add it to the theme itself, and plugins aren't going to be respecting your config either, so it's, they're going to be generally adding. If they're third-party plugins, they're going to be adding their own configuration as well. So, so it way, plays it, together. It, it, plays. It's a nice tool for you and your team to affect and uh, maintain all these different sites, but it's still going to work with uh, common WordPress standard. Mm -hmm. with another person just working on a theme kind of comes in here and does something. As long right. as the order of operations is, is correct, it'll work. Yeah. A lot of the benefit you showed was for like kind of a large multi-site network, and that makes sense. Uh, do you see a lot of benefits to using this kind of thing for even a smaller single site? Yeah, because like for the child theme, parent theme relationship, where I showed you have you know, all those conditional checks around, you know, is function, function exists, if function exists, do this, if not, define the function, um, if global variable set, do something, otherwise do something else. It just makes it a lot cleaner, and you can um, say if you, if your parent theme and your child theme are both trying to set the content with variable, or let's say constant or function, but after they run, you and a plugin, and your own plugin that you develop, develop for that site yourself, you want to actually change something, it's too late because it's already defined. But if, if everything was done in configuration or even, everybody would have a chance to say, not just the parent theme and the child theme, everybody, the plugins, they'd all be able to say, I want to have a voice in how this theme operates, and I define this function to be this. So everybody gets a chance. I think this would work well is a lot of projects I do, I have like a standard parent theme where I define, you know, navigation menus or a testimonial custom post type or whatever that a mm -hmm. lot of different projects use. Um, and I set up child themes on top of that parent, but I think implementing, you know, a config like this would definitely be beneficial, even if it's not a multi-site, but if you have a kind of standardized mm -hmm. parent theme or framework that you use mm -hmm. across different projects. Yeah. You can have your own framework parent theme that you add every single functionality you could ever imagine <laughs> and just opt into the features that your specific client's child theme needs to support. Yeah. So there's some, there are some things that are pretty theme specific in here, but some of the stuff kind of sounds like it belongs in the plugin as well. So you're saying that. <coughs> <laughs> so I think um, what, what I really think is neat about this is that we have this sort of paradigm in, in WordPress where things that affect the presentational layer go in a theme, things that affect functionality go in a plugin. Um, then there's this gigantic gray area where we put things inside their right. private place. Um, but what it almost seems like you're arguing for then is we need to have kind of this uh, third area that we can plug in, and that's um, configuration. Mm -hmm. Configuration doesn't belong in a theme, but there's a ton of configuration that goes in themes right now. Mm -hmm. That's the standard. Uh, but what you're saying is we can probably pull that out and put that somewhere else where we just manage uh, configuration. And uh, obviously, you can take this uh, to plugins as well, just mm -hmm. manage your plugin configuration elsewhere. Do you think that this is the type of concept that would potentially be good for introducing core to have this kind of third area of managing third party code where you're putting configuration outside of your mm -hmm. plugins. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> good thing you're doing now. No Boolean questions allowed. <laughs> True. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't have any hopes of it getting merged in, so. <laughs> well, it, 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 would, it would have to take a very different form, I'm sure. But. Yeah. Well, that kind of illustrates the same thing. Some of these questions are asking, is, is this good for 
probably not here for everybody. Probably not to go in with fingers on all fingers. No. <laughs> your team and sites that you're actually maintaining, it's cool to get more of the configuration of the site out of the database. Yeah. Yeah, this isn't applicable to, I mean, unless you want to include your WP array config class with everything you release and every plugin you release, um, and you don't have control over what new plugins are installed on your system. You can't, it's not very portable, but within the context of your team working on a site for a client with a long-term relationship, or I guess it doesn't have to be long-term, but um, it, it works well. Have you, I'm sorry. Okay, so aside from the um, flexibility that this gives you in configuration, um, did you notice in, in, uh, performance improvements as a result of doing it this way too, like you mentioned, Seem like it would be a significant performance improvement on a diagram example in terms of how long it takes for that to actually go out and check and load. Because if you're not checking the database, if it's already in the big file, it seems like that's much more straightforward. I well, switch to blog is a slow thing, but um, it, like you it wouldn't have to use switch to blog, like Zach said. I, I don't think we would. We haven't noticed any performance impact. So, no. Uh, another benefit, though, of using configuration arrays like this is that, you know, um, JSON schema, have you ever heard of that? Or like any schema uh, ontology, whatever you want to call it. It's basically, you know, just these, since these configurations are just, it's just an array, you can have a validator go through and check to see did you define everything that you need to? You know, you could um, functions, WordPress core functions. I assume are checking for things like that, but probably a lot aren't. You may forget to include some parameter for some functions. But if you <coughs> have a standardized array format that you accept configuration in, then you could then validate that configuration <laughs> because it's just data. You can validate it to check to see, do I have this array index defined? And if so, check each item in it to make sure that it has the required parameters. And um, you could add some additional um, checking to see if your site is properly coded. You could probably do that in a Git hook. We run, you know, every time someone does a push, we run Git hooks on our stuff so that you know, it runs syntax checking and that kind of thing for anyone. Yeah. Does merge back up to master or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you could definitely. Totally. Have you done much with, it seems like you're using this mostly to define runtime variables. Do you use it also to set, um, set things in the Netflix options and whatnot for new site creation? Um. Well, yes, uh, for another project, I've used this approach uh, for when a new multi-site license <laughs> is created. There's a configuration that indicates um, initial like widgets to create um, posts, like menu items to add, whatever you want your site to be instantiated with. Um, so yeah, it's using configuration to do that as well. Any more questions? All right, well thank you, Weston.